It's the return of Bull Armory. And for any uh, viewers of the channel for the past few months, you may know that we have done a review on a Bull Armory. And that was on a single stack government, uh, yeah, that was government length, which is a five inch barrel, uh, 1911. 1911 being different than a 2011, which would be double stack. Now, before anyone starts losing their mind, I understand. Let's just address this. A 2011 is technically a uh, trademarked STI, the artist formerly known as STI, now known as Staccato. That's technically uh, their thing. Well, bad news. Everyone already calls their double stack 1911s, uh, 2011s, assuming they have uh, a different uh, grip module such as this does. So suck it up. I'm calling it a 2011. But if you happen to see the previous bull video, you will know I was quite impressed with that gun, especially for the price. And um, I reached out to Bull Armory after that and I said, hey, thanks for letting me do that review. Um, I enjoyed it. I'd be happy to do something else for you guys at some point. So if you ever get anything, let me know. And uh, recently we were in touch and they were going to send me out a competition oriented uh, gun, which, hey, I'd, I'd happily do a video on. But truth be told is, you know, I'm not a competition shooter. I, I don't have uh, any jerseys or anything like that. So I, I don't shoot competitions. And uh, fortunately, they sent me out what would be a 2011 competitor to something like a uh, a Triarch or a Staccato or different things like that, which would be, hey, a duty carry oriented double stack 2011. Okay, so let's chat it up a bit. This particular model, it's the SAS-2 TAC Commander, TAC as in tactical. And uh, let's be honest, who doesn't want to be tactical? Even non-tactical people want to be tactical. It's just the cool thing to do these days, right? Get tactical. Hell, I'm a civilian asshole. I'm wearing knee pads and cry precision pants. So, um, but it's, uh, so yeah, let's just run through some, some basics on this. So comes in nine mil or 45, having the previous part of our day thus far, having shot 7.62 and uh, 45, uh, it is a joy to be shooting nine mil for the past little bit. So uh, this particular one is in nine mil. It has a bull barrel, okay? Which is not just because the company happens to be named Bull Armory. This one just happens to have a bull barrel, right? Which is gonna add some extra weight to the front end of that gun to keep it flat. Again, not a competition oriented gun. Although I imagine there are some divisions with whatever limited stock, blah, 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 where you could actually run that. I don't know what those are, so don't quote me on that. But uh, bull barrel, uh, stainless steel railed frame. Obviously, the grips are not stainless steel. We'll talk about those. Uh, but we do have a rail here. Interesting note. I don't know if this is of, you know, importance to anyone or it just struck me as odd because I didn't really have a holster to run this out of. That just being the fact that because I'm a lefty and it's a single side safety, while this gun does fit uh, this holster that I have for another 2011, I really was not comfortable drawing and training with this out of the holster today, just because frankly, you know, to be, you'd have to either be doing this shit, and it just didn't seem like a good idea. But uh, so last night, not planning on using the holster, I was like, oh, I'll throw a, a weapon light on it. So I tried to throw a Surefire X300 on. Granted, it's an older one. It's just a training light that I throw in, mostly just to look, just to look kind of sporty on pistols sometimes. And uh, it was weird. It would get to like the first notch and it would click in and you try to take it further back and it would not engage. There would just be this eternal gap of about yay big. Uh, I don't know that that matters. It was just, I was like, interesting. Why can't I get that Surefire to go all the way back? And there may be an exp explanation for that. I just don't have it for you here. Um, but you'd have a railed gun, so you could attach a, a variety of lights. It comes with, um, it comes with 226 millimeter mags. I'm going to save talking about those because I think it's of interesting, ah, fuck it. We'll just talk about it. Here's what's interesting about it. Okay, this is, I'm kind of skipping from a, a spec thing to a little bit of an opinion thing, but, so these are proprietary mags. Um, my STI mags and my MBX mags uh, do not work in this gun. They, the STI mag, the 17 round STI mags would in fact seat uncomfortably, but you would have to strip them out to get them out. So this gun runs on its own 
Israeli mags. And yes, Bull Army is, 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 uh, is an Israeli company and there's something kind of uh, enjoyable about that, like in talking to them and learning about this gun and kind of what they're doing in the industry stuff. It's kind of cool, you know, I'd be talking to them at like 10 a.m. my time over uh, Skype and they're back in the old country and it's, uh, I don't know, whatever the hell time it is over there. Um, but you know, these are proprietary mags and MBX does make bull armory compatible mags. So let that be of interest. That would of course, I would assume be because bull armory is playing at least a decent amount of their inventory is in the competition space and MBX is pretty popular amongst competition shooters who have ungodly amounts of money to spend on magazines since they frequently can go about as high as 150 bucks for a magazine. That is correct. $150 for a magazine, not a gun. So they do make some bull compatible magazines, but generally speaking, unless you're getting those, you're going to have to get proprietary bull armory magazines. I don't like that fact. I'm like, oh, that's, that, that sucks. That's, that's a big con for me. The only saving grace in that, and it's interesting and I can't really tell you why, is that these 126 millimeter mags, which would typically hold 17 rounds, so like on a uh, Triarch or an STI, st sorry, Staccato, uh, those would be 17 round mags. There's some Israeli voodoo that they have going on where these hold 19 rounds. Like that's not that they hold 17, but you know, if you're a professional power lifter, you can get 19 in, but damage your mag. No, they're, they're what would be 17 round mags, but they hold 19 rounds. So while I don't like the fact that they're proprietary mags, I love the fact that they hold 19 rounds because you just got to go, damn dog, like you, you carry that thing with one mag. Granted, the mag hangs out just a tad bit, not ob enough to be obnoxious, not enough to make it feel like a base plate uh, extent or plus five extension or something, but that's a 19 round mag. It, it's interesting. I don't like it, but then it's kind of balanced out by the fact that it holds more rounds. So I don't know. Uh, and just as a note, since I'm kind of skipping all over the place right now, those uh, mags that are going to run your gun run about 55 bucks a piece, which of course is expensive, but it's not expensive by 2011 terms. It would just be average. Like that's an average price for a magazine like that for a, uh, for a double stack like this. Uh, the trigger is three to three and a half pounds. It's it's quite nice. It's quite nice. Um, I'll, I'll just level with you. It's quite nice. Okay. So it's going to, you know, once you're playing around with 2011s, 1911s, as long as that's a good gun, they're all in my experience going to have a trigger that's pretty similar. There's occasions where I felt different things. Like, I mean, there's a, a friend's infinity 2011. That's a straight race gun that he has. And that thing is the only trigger I've ever felt that actually made me nervous. Or I was like, dude, I don't, I'm, like I'm afraid to touch it. Like I'm afraid to touch it because it's gonna go off, you know. Um, but this trigger is uh, is nice. There's a little take up there, which would be standard, and you hit a wall, and then three, three and a half pounds. Like it's 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 uh, you know, it's super crisp. Resets not. They're never gonna be the loudest in the world on these things as compared to some of your mainstream pistols. But it's a really really nice trigger. I like it. It's very easy to be accurate with. So take that for what it's worth. Um, da, 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 comes with a single side safety, safety and ambi safety you can get for an extra 50 bucks, which frankly, not bad at all. Usually that's a feature that, hey, you know, I would say typically you're looking at north of a hundred for an add-on like that with the manufacturers, 50 bucks, not bad at all. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, da, 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 da. the MSRP on this, and we're going to Debating if I want to talk about this now. Yeah, let's just talk. Fuck it. Just fuck it, man. Let's talk about it. The MSRP. It's $1350. Yo, $1350. So this this came in. I've only had this gun for less than a week, you know, and I took it to the range, shot some rounds there. Just want to make sure everything was functioning properly and took it out here today and ran it and when I opened it up, I was like, honestly, it's a good looking gun. I'll, I'll be very frank and I'll tell you about the things I don't like here in a second. But I was like, we were, me and the, and the dude at the, at the shop were like, like, you know, I wonder how much this is. And I was saying, I'm going to guess around two, maybe even 22, somewhere in that 2000 to 2200 range. Then we saw a packing slip and it said 1350. And I was like, yo, 1350, like, you've really got my ear now at 1350, assuming that it shoots worth a damn, which we'll get to. Um, but at 1350, I'm listening. 
I'm listening, okay? So we'll circle back to that, but it is very, very noteworthy. Okay, that's a little, uh, obviously we've got rear serrations, front serrations, they're good. They've got some bite, they're not obnoxious. They aesthetically they are, are pleasing, they look good. Uh, the sights we'll circle to here in a minute as we will the grips. Uh, that's, you know, that, that's it. For now, that's your tour, okay? Let's, let's circle around to Jake's opinion corner. If you buy a house with 1911 Syndicate, they'll give you your very own bald eagle. Hold up. Where did you hear that? Well, you know, it just felt right, so I went with it. Can we legally do that? We'll, we'll look into it. 1911 Syndicate. They attack your real estate goals like an eagle. Jake's, Jake's opinion corner coming at you. So, Bull Armory, one thing that I, they're really, I'm going to say trying to break into the U.S. market, which is not to say that they aren't. It's just to say that, hey, they're a relatively new player in the game compared to the staccatos and some of the, well, really, there's not that many names inside of that space, but like even the triarchs, like these are the, the new kid on the block compared to some of those uh, more well-established brands, if you will. And one thing that I appreciate them, and uh, if you're a viewer of the channel, you will know I'm equal parts uh, uh, paying attention to both the product, but also the consumer experience. Now, granted, I could be likely to get biased treatment from companies although to be perfectly honest i don't i refrain from going down the list of companies who i'm actually a customer of and have reached out to do videos to just get ghosted and never talk to again that would seem like strange business tactics wouldn't it that's correct okay bull armory i appreciate because hey they made an effort that said let's just talk about a couple things here um let's just hit the cons the things that i don't like okay so we already talked a little bit about the magazines, the proprietary mag thing, not a fan of that. That is, uh, I think that's going to be a bottleneck for them in some circles where people are like, Hey, getting into these types of guns is already not cheap because the guns aren't expensive. The thing you've always got to factor in with whatever new type of gun platform you get is one, I'm going to need holsters for those. Fortunately, this gun actually fits in holsters that I already had two of them. Actually, I can't even tell you which what two guns those holsters were for, but um, that's nice. But you're gonna need holsters, you're also gonna need magazines. It would be nice for those of us who are already into 2011s if your magazines were interchangeable versus me going, hey, it's a bottleneck in my urgency to wanna go buy a bull if I'm gonna have to go drop, because I like having separate mags for uh, range training, dropping in dirt, this bullshit environment and uh, carrying. So I like to, you know, I'm going to have to have at least half a dozen mag school. That's, you know, three to 350 bucks there. So it's just little bottlenecks like that. Not in love with the mag thing. I'm very intrigued about the, uh, the voodoo of getting 19 rounds into a mag that typically holds 17. Maybe they hit it with some sort of like Krav Maga move. Like it was a nut kick to the mag. I probably shouldn't say that because in all fairness, they will probably come find me and they're going to draw appendix on me to try to take me out for making fun of Krav Maga. The only downside of that is as their gun's coming out, because it's not chambered, they're going to have to rack that gun. Damn it, I made fun of Israeli shit. Again, you guys get the point, okay? Like, there's pros and cons to the proprietary mag thing. A couple of the other things. Uh, the grips, I, I, I don't like. Okay, I don't like the grips. They feel very, very cheap. But again, we have a gun that's 1350, which for a lot of people are saying, that's an expensive gun. What are you talking about? But it's not inside of that space. Okay. It's all relative. So the grips, they feel fine. Like in terms of the actual texture, they're fine. They don't feel bad. And I mean, around on the mainspring housing front strap, there's texturing here. It's pretty chill. It's nothing like super aggressive or super mild. It's kind of in that middle zone. I would say if anything, it can maybe be a little bit more, but not by much. It's fine. I'm kind of neutral on it. The grips, again, the texture feels fine, but they very, you know, they, they sound kind of cheap when you ding on them. And like, you can just tell they're, they're, they're plastic, you know, because for those of you, again, not familiar with this uh, category of firearms, this is not part of the frame. You know, it's not like a Glock where, hey, the, the frame is this. No, these, these can be swapped out. Um, so there are some 
very brief, not really. There's not really much in the way to swap these out because I'm just remembering through my conversation with them. Not really much. Don't love the grips and unfortunately you're kind of sort of stuck with them until they get you a better option. And then the other thing uh, would be the sights. Front sight, I could really care less about. That should in theory be pretty interchangeable. The rear sight, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a technical term that a lot of uh, like kind of science oriented YouTube reviewers use. Ugh. It's, uh, it, you know, it's just, uh, I don't like them. They're, they're just, one, they're these three white dots. Um, two, the rear sight is just the, I mean, it's like a ski slope. You're just like, you know, it's like that, what's that thing where you like, you're going down the hill and then you come up and then you fly off the end. It's that shape where you fly and then they just do that. And they just basically, what would appear to be committing suicide, but somehow they land, landed at the end and it's mind blowing and we all cheer, but are kind of disappointed because they didn't wreck because American loves destruction. You get the point, right? These things with this slant, like you are definitely not racking this off of Correct, sir. Anything like if you heard movement, that's the ejection port. These sights themselves are not catching on anything, and I just don't know why that was the case. Like, I don't know why that needed to be the case. Uh, I but you know what? I'm gonna, despite this, you're gonna people are gonna be like, Oh, you didn't prep for your review. I wrote down some note they told me because I already told them this, by the way. This is nothing that they don't already know. Ah, there's replacements from uh Dawson, which is good. So, hey, you can replace them, and there's a few other. European companies. I don't know a whole lot of what the European companies are, but good news there, you, you can replace these. Those really are my two major, three major dings would be mags, grips, sights. Grips function fine. They just feel a little like not what I would, not what wouldn't be my preference. Sights can be changed out. Mags, that kind of is what it is. So you've got to weigh out how big a deal that stuff is to you. Now that's it. Let's talk about the pros. Did you hear when I said it was thirteen fifty? Like I'm telling you, I picked up this gun and I was like, "That's got to be somewhere in the ballpark of two grand." It ain't. It's one thousand. To make it clear, if thirteen fifty was confusing, one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Ding, ding, ding. Price is right. Sound effect inserted here. Like that's a really, really good price tag. Because I'm gonna tell you, shooting this thing today and the prior range day I had on it, I was like, "Dude, this thing is nice." Like. It's not nice for 1350. It's nice. Like straight up, that is a very, very smooth slide. Like very, very smooth. Like fit and finish, solid. Like, I mean, legit. It's solid. I've got, keep in mind, this is my wheelhouse, right? So like I've got triarchs and STIs and, and cool stuff like that. I would concede I think those are probably better guns. And again, components wise, being American guns, it's just gonna be easier with mags and, and sights and stuff like that. So you're gonna have more options. But gosh, that, I'll tell you straight up, there is not a a clear, like if you're talking about $3,000 on uh, some of those bigger name 2011s, plus 3,000 plus or 1350 on something like this. The thing I really, really love about this is to me, this is the kind of thing where you go, man, people who've been dabbling and thinking about like, man, I really like to get into 2011s. I don't really know that I want to throw, you know, 3,500 bucks at, at getting something and everything. You just go, look, you can pick that up. It comes with two mags. You go get a holster made, two extra mags, you know, one extra mag, just so you got three mags to train with. And you go, okay, you're in this thing for 15 hundo or less. And if you don't like it for some reason, which I think you will, I think you definitely will, you go, what well, wasn't 3,500, you shape two grand off of the entry price into this space. And I think that is significantly notable. And just for the hell of it, I was going to their, through their site and everything. <coughs> site, by the way, not super easy to find here in the US. I can't really explain why. Whoever's running SEO at Bull Armory, please make it easier to find your site on Google. I can't explain why it's difficult, but it, for some reason it is. I think it's just bullarmory.com in case anyone's typing it in right now. But um, I did a little homework to go, okay, is this like their, but like what's the range of 2011s, you know, for them? And they've got some competition, like 
heavy duty comped out red dot kind of you know wild shit that most of us you know non-competition folks are gonna not gonna have any interest in and that stuff can creep up over three grand but generally speaking i mean you're talking 1200 to 2000 for a tw 2011 there right and that is i'm telling you it, it's noteworthy and it's worth looking at because this thing was accurate i mean again not a very accurate shooter i was dinging steel no problem at about 80 yards with this very easy gun to be accurate with man frankly easier than i do uh, a lot of other guns like this was very easy to be accurate at distance again four and a quarter barrel not even a five inch barrel it shoots very smooth you can run it very fast um guys you got a winner here like this is this is my second bull armory video and despite dinging it on a couple of things i gotta tell you they're batting two for two with me and you know for your reference sake neither of those two guns get to stay with me uh because i volunteered for those reviews and hey that you know like i was comfortable uh d doing that for them and of course if it sucked i was going to tell you that it sucked but uh they're two for two. I'm telling you, that 1911 I reviewed prior was like $1,750, give or take a couple bucks. This at $1,350, guys, you got one. You got one. Uh, I'm told their lead time is about 90 days. I'm skeptical of any lead time that I'm ever given because I have just horror stories of lead times with so many companies, as I'm sure you guys do. Um, but I'm telling you, you got one. Like, it, this is the kind of thing where I would strongly tell you, if you've thought about getting into that 2011 world and the price tag is a barrier to entry for you, legit, check it out, okay? I'm saying that with no upside in this whatsoever, legit, check it out. There's other guns that I would prefer if budget were not an issue, but if budget is either an issue or just a, I don't wanna go balls deep on that platform yet and drop three grand, like I'd rather start out slow and ramp up, SAS 2 Attack Commander, you got a winner. Bugs. Fucking fly, man. One of these days, these bugs are going to leave me alone. Until then, though, I hope everyone has a nice week. And, um, you know, whatever you're doing with yourself, uh, I don't know, keep doing that. Keep wearing your masks. Don't breathe in. And staying uh, safe and healthy and, like, you know... <coughs> Stay safe. Wear your, wear your mask. Wash your hands. No bacteria anywhere. Bacteria is horrible for you. It's not like herd immunity is a real thing. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole. Anyway, nice to see everyone. Hope you guys have a nice week. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff that you already know what to do. In terms of how you can support our channel, we try to keep this thing as free and organic and uh, fun as possible. So we don't ask for anything other than just support our company when you need us. What is it that you do? Thanks for asking. Uh, actually in the real estate services world. So we operate in uh, Utah, parts of Florida, Texas, Arizona. So if you're buying, selling a house, or if you have a buddy or something like that, contact us. You can go to the website, shoot us an email, shoot us a DM on Instagram. We'll have all that stuff below. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to you. We actually see and check messages. So thanks for the support and we'll see you guys soon.